So guys, I just got home from the first day back at school this term. And um, as you can see, the mailbox is pretty full. I've got a couple of packages here. So um, let's go inside and see what we got. Opening up the packaging, this is a white iPhone 4S, which has a broken power button. We will be replacing the power and sensor cable, which should make the power button work and click again. There is also some text written on it saying U slash L. I assume that means unlocked written on the screen protector, although I later found out that it was locked to Telstra, but I easily got that restriction removed. Going into the About page, you can see it is in fact a 16GB model running iOS 9.3.5. Next I removed the plastic screen protector, which is actually quite hard to get off, especially since the eBay listing said it had had a screen protector on for its whole life. I ended up getting it off using a metal pry tool. Cosmetically, this iPhone is in extremely good condition, the only fault being the broken power button which I will now replace. First of all we need to remove the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the iPhone and push the rear panel upward until it comes free. Next up we can remove the screws holding in the battery connector and disconnect that, making sure not to lose the small pressure contact in doing so. Next we can pry up the battery using a plastic opening tool. The adhesive is reasonably strong, but not as bad as newer iPhone batteries which are basically held down with super glue. The next step is to remove the bracket securing the dock connector cable, and then disconnect the cable itself from the logic board and carefully peel it off. The antenna cable can also be disconnected and derouted. Next we can take out the screws holding down the logic board connector bracket, and then remove it from the logic board which is actually quite difficult to do. Next we need to remove the SIM tray and we can disconnect the rear camera from the logic board and remove that. We can then disconnect the five connectors from the board. Next up we can go ahead and remove the screw holding in the grounding clip and then remove the clip itself. This reveals a standoff screw which can be removed using a small flathead screwdriver. The Wi-Fi antenna can also be disconnected. Now I need to remove the black tape covering the screw near the power button. The screw holds in a grounding clip for the rear camera so make sure to realign it underneath the logic board when reassembling. Next we can remove the remaining three screws from the logic board one of which is another standoff screw. The logic board can then be removed from the iPhone. The small grounding clip I mentioned earlier can be removed too. Next we can go ahead and remove the front facing camera bracket, which requires some effort. Then the front facing camera is free to be removed. Next, the two screws holding in the power button can be removed. One of the screws is hard to get to because the display cables are in the way, so I suggest taping back the cables to allow more room for the screwdriver. The power button can then fall out. The UP speaker can then be unfolded from its cable, which is quite fiddly, and then it can be removed. The top sensors can be pried up using a plastic opening tool and then the whole power and sensor cable can be removed. Don't lose the little clip which sits on top of the top sensor assembly. Now it's time for reassembly. I ordered this replacement cable from eBay for $3.99 Australian. Although the cable is extremely fragile, as the first time I attempted this repair, I snapped it where it connects to the logic board. We need to remove the stickers protecting the adhesive and then line up the top sensors into their recess. We can then install their appropriate bracket, which is fiddly to get installed but it will hold the sensors in place. 
Next we can fold the earpiece speaker over so it sits flush in its recess. It may be easier to remove the top sensors temporarily to make it easier to fold the earpiece speaker over. Now I can reinstall the power button and fold the corresponding cable over so it sits in place. Once in place, we can reinstall the two retaining screws for the power button. It's always a good idea at this point to make sure the button does click before you reinstall anything else. Next up, we can reinstall the front facing camera and the bracket that sits over the top of it. Now it's time to reinstall the logic board, ensuring all cables are out of the way so nothing gets broken. We can line up the rear camera grounding clip underneath the screw hole closest to the power button and then reinstall the screw for just a few turns to hold it in place. Now we can reinstall the rest of the screws for the logic board and tighten the first screw off. Next we can reinstall the Wi-Fi antenna cable and standoff screw that goes next to it. Then we can put in the grounding clip and its appropriate screw. Now we can reconnect all the logic board connectors making sure the cables are untangled first. Next up we can go ahead and reinstall the little rubber gasket that sits underneath the rear camera and then install the camera itself and connect it to the logic board. Now it's time to reinstall the logic board shield and screw it down. We can reroute and reconnect the antenna cable and then reconnect the dock connector cable and screw its bracket into place. Next we can reinstall the battery, which should still have enough adhesive from before to stick it into place. We can replace the pressure contact and screw the connector into position.
Now we can slide the back panel into place, reinstall the SIM tray and install the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of the iPhone and that completes the repair part of this video. Pressing the power button we can see that it does work but the battery is flat. After a few minutes of charging it booted right up and we can test the power button out. We can also test the proximity sensor by recording a voice memo and putting a finger over the top of the phone. If the sensor is working then the screen should turn black. I made sure the microphones were still working by talking to Siri and she seemed to understand what I was saying. Now I'm going to downgrade this iPhone 4s back to iOS 6.1.3 as Apple still signs this version. I downloaded the file from a website called ipsw.me, link in the description, and connecting the phone to iTunes, I can shift click the restore button and select the restore file. This process takes several minutes so I've sped this up. We are greeted with the classic iOS 6 hello screen. Going through the setup process is simple and going into the about page in settings, you can see this is indeed running iOS 6.1.3. Of course, the best thing about classic iOS is definitely the sound effects. So this is it, an iPhone 4S with a broken power button has been repaired and restored back to fully working condition and also downgraded back to iOS 6. I hope you enjoyed this video, please stay tuned for more videos just like this one. Please follow my social media, links for which are down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.